Hey folks, this is Kalani. Patch 10.2.5 introduced a brand new feature called the Azerothian Archives that seems to kind of replace archaeology thematically with new minigames and activities to uncover some secrets of the past. You'll need to work through various quests to unlock the true potential of this system, and you'll need to farm both reputation and currency to collect all of the various rewards on offer. So let's go over everything you need to know about the Azerothian Archives feature, how it all works, how how you can farm reputation with this new faction, and the best ways to acquire the mysterious fragments currency. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. To start your archiving adventures, you're going to need to swing by the Azure Library in Valdraken. In here, you can find a little poster on the wall that asks you to pop by the archives to learn more about these newfound discoveries. The quest is going to take you to a tower near the Algathar Academy, and this is where you meet the lead archivist as well as a few of his assistants. This is the main hub, I guess, for the Azerothian archives right now. It's where your intro quests are going to be, where you turn in various other quests related to the activity, and where the rewards vendor is as well. The intro quests walk you through how the system works and how the two main minigames work that will allow you to progress through the next set of quests and complete world quests later on. The first mini game you'll need to get used to is scrying with your techno scrying goggles. When you use the goggles, you need to start the search mode and run around trying to find whatever is hidden in the area. As you get closer, the little dotted line on the map will turn red and fill up, and the cross will turn red when you're right next to it. It can be a pain to see what you need to interact with sometimes, so turn around a few times to get your scrying light on the object, and keep an eye out for anything that changes colour or gets an outline. Line. That's pretty much it for this one. At the end of the objective, you do get to see a little cutscene thing from the past, which gives you a bit of lore about what has happened in this area. The other main minigame is excavating. You'll need to use a totem to activate a dig area, and then balance out the elements to be able to dig up whatever is hidden beneath the surface. Your totem will always provide one source of this balancing act, and then the other side always comes from the environment. So you can't just spam your totem, you're going to throw everything too far to one side. Usually just clicking your totem once and then excavating the item as quickly as you can will be enough, but if you overuse your totem, you'll need to find the opposite force in the nearby environment, like in little puddles or interactables. The larger excavating jobs can take a bit longer, but it's all the same really. Try to keep the meter somewhere in the middle, and dig as often as you're allowed to. After you complete the little intro sections, you'll be given multiple new quests to do the same kind of thing in other areas of the Dragon Isles, including the Forbidden Reach and down in Zaralek Caverns. You want to get these quests done for two reasons. First, all of the quests related to the Azerothian Archives reward you with rep, which you're going to need if you want to get all of the goodies from this activity. And second, as you complete these quests, especially the ones after the intro section, you will unlock various new world quest options. These world quests reward a lot of rep, about 300 for each world quest from what I've seen, and they also reward a lot of the fragment currency. These world quests will reset twice per week by the looks of things, so getting all of the available world quests done can give you a big boost of rep and currency gains. I would recommend you install an add-on like World Quest List to be able to see these world quests a bit easier. So I would recommend you work through all of the quests currently available to us with the Azerothian Archives first to unlock everything you can. These quests should also have their own little section in your quest log too, so they're super easy to keep track of. After that I would focus on the other repeatable sources like world quests and the group event. Speaking of the group event, there is a new public event in 1025 which is tied to the Azerothian Archives called The Big Dig Traitor's Rest. There's a weekly quest that you can pick up from the lead archivist which provides you with a big chunk of rep and currency. The currency reward alone from that quest can buy you a reward from the archivist vendor, so you really want to get this done every week, especially if you don't want to grind in other areas of the feature. To finish the weekly quest, all you have to do is complete the event once. While you can complete the weekly quest on multiple characters, the rewards will change for everyone after your first completion. For your first weekly quest, you get 5,000 fragments, but you can only get that reward once per account per week. So any of your other characters will only get the rep reward and a Dragon Isle supply cash. So unless you want to farm the rep on multiple characters for some reason, you only really need to do the weekly quest on one character per week. 
The event is over in the Azure span, marked with the usual public event horn. It starts up every hour on the half hour, so it's up super often and you should be able to get it done even if you have restricted or limited playtime. The event is really simple, just complete activities to earn pages to fill up the score bar at the top. The more points you get, the more rewards you will end up with. You want to stay close to the NPC to get some direct orders. If you get any orders, be sure to complete them quickly so you can get back to digging. If you don't get any orders, hang around the NPC PC and dig up the dirt until you get something more exciting to do. The dirt digging isn't all too grand, but it's the best thing you can do without any orders from what I can tell. After the event has been running for 10 minutes, the boss will spawn, so be sure you get a tag on that. The boss will reward you with some rep, drops about 100 fragments, has a chance to drop transmog items in amount, and even new quest items which reward you with even more rep and currency. The other main reward you're going to get are these tomes. These are green, blue and purple tomes that you get from filling up the score bar and you can get quite a few of these per event you run. I think the most I've gotten so far was 7 in one event, but the better you do in the event and the more players that are contributing instead of standing AFK, the more score you're going to get so the better rewards everyone will get. So at least dig up that dirt if you have nothing else to do. When you open the tomes, you'll get reputation and fragments, and the higher the quality of the tome, the more rep and currency you will get. They also have a chance to contain transmog rewards, as well as the horn stride amount, so you have plenty of chances to get all of these rewards. Whenever you open a tome, there's a chance for a small relic to be in there as well, which you can open to get even more fragments currency. So tomes are going to be a huge source of both rep and currency for this faction. Now, I haven't actually seen any limits on taking part in the event so far, so you should be able to do this as many times as you can or want to. You'll keep getting tomes to open and you can get rewards from the boss every time, so this is your repeatable source of rep and currency if you've done everything else like the world quests or the normal quests. Now most of the rewards on offer from this new activity are new transmog options, they're all explorer themed with a big Indiana Jones vibe, so if you love this kind of theme, these items will fit into your collection quite nicely. The offhand whip is one of my favourite items from this event for sure, just pop by the reward vendor whenever you want to look at what is on offer. There's also a new mount thrown in for good measure, but you'll have to do quite a bit of farming for this one. It requires 20,000 mysterious fragments, so save them all up if the mount is what you're after. It is worth noting that you can trade the fragments between your alts using the priceless artifact item. So if you are running the world quests on multiple characters, you might be able to speed up acquisition of certain rewards and items by funneling all of your fragments to one character. Bear in mind, there are no power spikes hidden in this feature or system, it's all cosmetic rewards, and we have plenty of time to collect them all. So don't feel like you have to no life all of your ults just to get these rewards. We still have half a year minimum before the war within drops, so there really is no rush. Enjoy your peaceful excavating before the next big content drop comes our way. But that's everything we know so far about the Azerothian Archives, how it all works, and how you can farm the required reputation and currency to purchase any of the rewards that catch your eye. What do you think of the Azerothian Archives from what you played in 10.2.5? Should the dev team keep this feature updated with new dig sites and areas as the patches progress? And would you like to see the feature continue into the War Within expansion? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find the links in the description or to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.